today we want to talk about ions. Ions are simply charged atoms. Now, how do atoms go about getting charged? It comes down to their outer shell electrons. These outer shell electrons can be lost or can be gained. If, for instance, we were to lose these two outer shell electrons, we would have 12 protons, but we would only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 electrons. So the charges wouldn't be balanced, and we'd end up with an excess of positive charge. How much positive charge? Well, it was 10 protons with positive charge plus 10 electrons with negative charge so you end up with an excess of two protons or a charge of plus two. And in fact, chemistry is all about the outer shell electrons. They're the most important thing in all of chemistry because all that bonding, all of those reactions, it's involving those outer shell electrons. They're much more important than the inner shell electrons or the neutrons or the protons to chemistry. And we have a little rule called the full outer shell rule, sometimes called the octet rule, because some of the shells are full when they have eight electrons. So if this is our nucleus, and we've got orbits out here, then there's a maximum number of electrons that can be had in each of the orbits. We're only going to study the first few orbits. The first shell can only have a maximum of two electrons, the second shell a maximum of eight electrons, and the third shell a maximum of eight electrons as well, at least for our purposes. So it was two electrons, eight electrons, and eight electrons. It turns out that atoms are much more stable when they have a full outer shell, and that's why they tend to complete that outer shell. Let's consider the atom below. First question, how many electrons would this atom have to gain to get a full outer shell? Well, in the outer shell here, we've got one, two electrons. We're going to need, if we're going to add electrons, we'd have to add another six electrons to complete that shell. But if we were to lose electrons, we would just have to take away two electrons, and that would kind of eliminate our old outer shell, and we'd have a new outer shell, which would have eight electrons in it. What do you think is going to be more likely, to gain six electrons or to lose two electrons? Hopefully you said that it would be more likely to lose two. It's easier to lose two electrons than to gain six electrons, simply because two is smaller than six. This atom right here is magnesium, Mg, and that's the neutral atom magnesium. It has 12 protons and it has 12 electrons. The ion that it forms is when two electrons are lost. So we'd lose two electrons. And this orbit would disappear because there's no electrons in it. And we'd be left with this ion. So this would still be magnesium. And we'd write magnesium for the symbol. Mg is the symbol for magnesium. But now we'd put in the charge number. It has two more protons than it has electrons. So it has an excess of plus two. And that's how we indicate. It's called the charge number or the ion charge number. And magnesium, it always tends to lose two electrons because it's got two electrons in its outer shell. So it always forms the same ion, magnesium plus two. And in fact, this idea is going to be responsible for how the periodic table looks. All of this 
all of these green elements, they're metals. Whereas these yellow ones, or orange ones here, they're all non-metals. And that's going to have everything to do with how many electrons are in their outer shell. In that first family, there was always one electron in outer shell. In the second family, it was two electrons. So they have nearly empty outer shells. Way over here, this family has seven outer shell electrons. So it's almost got a full, full shell, and it will tend to gain electrons. Elements that lose electrons are called metals. Elements that gain electrons to get a full outer shell are called nonmetals. These ones along here are called metalloids. And there's, they have properties that are somewhat like metals and somewhat like nonmetals. So elements that tend to gain electrons are nonmetals when you gain electrons. If you tend to lose electrons, then you've got metals. Which of these two is likely to gain an electron and which one's likely to lose an electron? So hopefully you said this guy is likely to gain an electron. Whereas this guy here is likely to lose. We've looked at this element before. It's fluorine. If it gains an extra negative charge, it will have a charge of minus one, a charge of one electron, one excess electron. This element with three protons, that's lithium, and the symbol is Li. It's going to lose an electron. That means there will be three protons and just two electrons. So there's an excess of one proton, or an excess of positive one in charge. And usually, we'll just write that as L as lithium plus. We don't have to write the 1. That's kind of the default value. And we can just write it as Li plus. But the plus really means plus 1. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.